Okay, this morning I'm going to do a review of my uh, cycling shoes, which as you can see I've got quite a lot of. Uh, these are almost all the sh cycling shoes I've ever had in my um, six years of cycling. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. I've actually had um, seven pairs in six years, which is far too many. I made some mistakes. And I'm going to explain uh, what I think is important in cycling shoes. And we're going to go through these in a historical order. Uh, and in fact, uh, that's basically the order in which I would recommend them uh, with some provisos. I first, okay, my first pair of shoes aren't here. Uh, my first pair of shoes were a um, mountain bike um, SPD. That's the small, small metal cleats. And uh, they lasted me for two years. They were lace-ups. They were basically like walking shoes, mountain climbing shoes, uh, with um, uh, cleats on the bottom. They're very easy to walk in. They're also very heavy, and the soles weren't very stiff. And uh, st sole stiffness is one point about um, cycling shoes. I didn't know at the time, but after two years of using them, losing a bit of weight, I decided to go for a, um, a road bike shoe for my road bike. And so my first shoes, and my first road bike shoes, were uh, these. Uh, these are uh, Shimano shoes. Uh, Shimano, I recommend them as a make. They are R076. And they were fine for a couple of years. Well, two and one and a half seasons. I wore them in all uh, weathers. Uh, as you can see, they've got three uh, Velcro straps, as opposed to lace-ups. Uh, and they take either uh, SPD or SPDSL uh, cleats. And uh, the problem with them was, apart from uh, at the time, this is what I realised at the time, was that um, that while that they were light and improvement improvement over my um, mountain biking shoes, they um, uh, the soles parted company with uh, the the uppers. And the reason for this is that the leatherette or the artificial leather uppers. Um, ha have a skin covering a fabric substrate and the skin remained uh, attached to the sole whereas the fabric substrate came away so I tried gluing them together and in my first attempt to glue them I didn't use a last. Uh, a last is a foot shaped piece of uh, wood or material of some sort to push inside the shoe. So when I clamped them down I damaged the tops of the shoes. Can you see here I've damaged the toe there and that uh, destroyed the uh, feel of um, riding in them. So I didn't, I wasn't enjoying them after that. And um, I decided to invest in a new pair. And one other thing about them is that uh, they're not all that stiff, that I can uh, bend them. Um, when you go to a shoe store, I'm not sure that they'll let you do this, but uh, it's quite easy to flex these shoes because uh, they're made of nylon. Uh, this, the, the sole here is made of nylon. And so I can uh, bend them, even with one hand, uh, into a sort of a, a U, or not as much of a U. And I didn't know that at the time, I hadn't read many reviews at the time. But we shall see, that's uh, one important part about a shoe. So it was, it, they were light, and I also didn't know that Velcro isn't quite enough. And I didn't know why then. Uh, where, this is the, the take-home of this video. Uh, the take-home of the video is that I didn't know that Velcro wasn't enough, and I also didn't know that, um, that heel caps are important. And these things have got a quite a crushable heel, and there isn't much of a curve either to the heel. So they're basically rather like the lace-up shoes. There was something that held me in at the front of the foot, and just held me in like a running shoe, really. Uh, they were lighter. Uh, so uh, they were okay, but um, I moved on. My second pair of shoes were similarly priced, uh, less than $100. Um, a fairly entry-level uh, specialised pair of shoes, uh, similarly um, using um, Velcro, uh, three Velcro straps, and I preferred them. Uh, I like my Shimano shoes, but I like these a bit more uh, because of the uh, heel. Can you see the shape of the heel there? Uh, the heels on these specialised shoes are curving quite a lot inwards, and especially when I first got them, they gradually lost their strength in the heel. There's this sort of, um, a new, whole new experience for me, and this is the thing I really want to talk about, is that the way in which all my previous shoes, the, the lace-ups and, and the, the Shimano uh, Velcro shoes, had held my foot, was hold it into the forefoot. Yeah, hold it into the forefoot with the Velcro straps. But you can see that if, um, 
if, if a strap is raked backwards, raked backwards as in uh, the strap doesn't go just sort of binding your shoe into the sole, but is um, somewhat pointed backwards along this, in, in this trajectory, then it can push you into a cup at the rear of the heel. This one doesn't have a cup, but it is arched. So that it, if it pushes you, your heel into the arch here, it can hold your heel in place. And these had slightly that effect. And it was a whole new experience because when cycling, and this is the whole point of having cycling shoes, is that there's obviously a downward and also an upward um, uh, trajectory or torque. That you, no, you don't only stomp on the pedals, you're to an extent, and power meters tell us it's not much of an extent, we're also pulling using our shoes. So we're pulling on the upswing and pushing, pulling and pushing. And what I found was that until that time, I'd been doing both with my forefoot. Yeah? Uh, in other words, I've been pushing with my forefoot and pulling with my forefoot. And I'd, I'd produce a very strange riding style that I'd always be in a very high um, position in order to make the most of this sort of forefoot uh, grip that my shoes provided, that I'd be riding with my shoes in this position so that I could um, uh, push and pull with my forefoot. But with these uh, new shoes, with their sort of arch in the, in the heel, I realised that um, this held my, um, uh, I don't know what a heel bone is called, but it's um, firmly attached to one's uh, uh, fibia, the, the, the large bone in one's um, calf. So that I found that now I was pushing with my forefoot and pulling with my leg or my fibia or with my heel, which was held in place into this arch. So I was pushing down that way and pulling up this way. And this sort of uh, brought a whole new cycling style. Um, and I really enjoyed it. However, in order to enjoy it, I was having to really pull these straps down tight. And as you can see, I've had to darn that strap there because the uh, Velcro came apart from the, um, uh, the piece of plastic. You see, I've darned that. And it was, they were going, uh, uh, others of the straps were going. So the Velcro was coming, across, coming apart from the fake leather strap itself because I was pulling them down so tightly, uh, the other one, the other top strap on the, on the other shoe, in order to get this sort of uh, healed effect. And this is when I realized that what, what I needed was a ratchet. And that ratchets aren't just some gimmick. Uh, lately, um, Giro, and I, I really respect Giro, I've supported, brought out some lace up shoes again. Um, why not just have laces? Who needs Velcro? Indeed, who needs Velcro? But ratchets are not just a gimmick. Because, and my next pair of shoes, uh, we really want, these were both under $100 shoes. My next pair of shoes, I, want, I wanted a ratchet because I realised the importance. A ratchet, and these shoes are top of the range from a long way away, a long time ago, Shimano shoes. These are SR215s. Um, a ratchet, you can see it's raked back. It's, um, the ratchet there is pointing towards the heel and also it's stiff in a lateral direction, yeah? So that in, st in order to push a foot into, the, into a heel, you might think you need to do it from the toe. But if you do it from um, the forefoot uh, using this ratchet here, it needs to be fairly stiff. And then it pushes you into this cup here. And uh, these Shimano shoes have got a, a nylon cup. And so that this really held my fibia and my ankle into the rear of the shoe and gave me this leverage on the upswing. And now in terms of power, that may have only been like 5%, um, a very few percent of the power, but it um, held me firmly in place so that uh, I could get this um, <clears throat> like cyclist's um, uh, spin motion. Now these, are, these were top of the range shoes at about $380. Um, uh, very light and as strong as concrete at the bottom. They're carbon soles and I can't bend these anymore. The, the, the specialized ones, I could bend those too. Can't bend these at all. Wonderful. Problem with them was uh, that they were second hand and again, Shimano shoes, what are you doing to me? They came apart here and I had to glue them up again. I, I knew how to use a last again, but it, they came apart twice. The other thing is that Shimano shoes are fairly broad. Uh, I'd got thin by then, I have thin feet now. And um, they weren't holding me in the forefoot. And not that it's so important, because as I say, I was pushing down with my forefoot and pulling up with my uh, ratchet held heel. But I wanted um, all round uh, support. And also, I was sick of the shoes coming apart. But I used these for a year and they're the bomb. No, they're not 
quite. They're, they're brilliant, but they're uh, they weren't quite for me. A bit too big in the in the front, not tight tight enough in the front, and they were coming apart. Very good shoes though. Very very uh, firm. Really like steel plate, except ultra lightweight. Uh, but the carbon sole there is uh, amazingly strong. Okay, my next pair of shoes, which I won't really review because they just weren't for me. What I thought was I'd go for a boa system. And a very particular, these are lake shoes, and they're the ones that had the boa system as the heel. And I chose these because I thought that this um, heeled uh, boa system would enable me to um, uh, get the same um, ratchet back into the heel effect as I'd achieved with uh, a ratchet, but just by using a boa. Because I, I thought, since the boa is at the back there, and there's a bit of wire going all around your foot there, that I'd be able to pull my foot both tightly at the front and also into the heel cup at the back. And these have got a heel cup as well. As you can see, the heel, the, the boa system is up near the top of the heel there. So I, I imagined that I'd get this cosseting all around, uh, corseting, is that cosseting or encapsulated all round effect there. And they are wonderful shoes. Um, I got them really cheap on eBay, but unfortunately there are a lot of import charges there. I, I, I took them down at about $80, and, and I, the, the poor guy that sold them to me had to go through a lot of trouble, because um, eBay now um, uh, charges a lot of uh, export duty, and it's a real pain. But they ended up costing me $160, twice what um, I, I, I thought I'd be able to buy them for. Um, wonderful shoes. They're made of leather on the uppers. The uh, soles are a stiff or almost as the, um, I can't tell the difference as the, the Shimano's that I just showed you. And uh, they do bind your foot into the sole of the shoe such that you, you feel as if it's the sole that's holding you in place, not the uppers because the, they, um, it's like a womb or something. They bind you into the, they bind you into the shoe like this so that you don't feel any pressure over here. Uh, you just feel as if your shoe, your foot is being held into the shoe by the rock hard um, bottom. So it's like sort of being in a, a super slipper. Uh, I don't know, it's sort of as, as cushioned as a slipper at the top. Um, but, I'm losing my focus here, why is this? Uh, as, as cushioned as a, a slipper at the top. Uh, but um, as hard as a um, racing shoe at the bottom. Uh, good heel support as well. So, wonderful shoes, I think, for anyone who doesn't like to sprint. Uh, because, why do I say this? Is because um, the uh, boa system at the heel didn't quite do it for me. In order to get that raked back uh, feeling of um, cupping your foot into the heel firmly, I had to tighten the boa up too tightly, which meant that the very top wires here that were going around to the back of the heel dug into my forefoot. If I loosen this up even a little, um, then they were fine. Uh, but mm, that wasn't what I was looking for. I think that anyone who likes to travel a long way on their bicycle, I never travel very far, I go at most about 24 kilometers in about 45 minutes. Um, a sprinty kind of run, I don't go very far uh, often. Anyone who likes to go a long way, these may be the perfect shoe because uh, they're really comfortable, really hard, lightweight, uh, wonderful feeling, just a whole new feeling of like, I don't know, yeah, oh, I don't know, sort of something has got hold of your, something animal has got hold of your foot and, um, and is sort of sucking it into the crank. Uh, but they weren't for me because I couldn't get this sort of ratcheted into the heel feeling that I liked without slightly digging into my forefoot there. And I plan to sell them. Okay, my next pair, uh, second to last pair, are these, which I highly recommend, the G Giro Apex. Now I've gone back to a non-carbon, um, uh, both of those two, um, the, the Shimano uh, and the uh, Lake were carbon sold. These are not carbon sold, they've got um, a nylon sole, but it's made by DuPont. And I wondered whether it was all going to be just a load of uh, marketing uh, fluff. Uh, but the, uh, the soles on these are approaching 
carbon in stiffness. They're not, no, they're not really. If you were a racer, there wouldn't be anything like it. But, um, I don't know, they're not, they're nowhere near. I go back to the Specialized, and the Specialized and the Shimano's, you can bend them like, um, I don't know, almost like trainers. Well, no, not like trainers, but they've got, they lack in stiffness, really. You can, you can feel it when you, when you go back to these. I can't go back to these. And I was scared, you know, after having uh, two pairs of carbon shoes. Well, I didn't use the lakes much, but after enjoying the stiffness of the Shimano, I thought, no, I wouldn't be able to use these. But I can. They don't, they're not quite as stiff, but they have other advantages in that, first of all, they've got that good ratchet back into a firmly created, um, they've got a, uh, Giro shoes are so understated, they don't tell you how good they are. Uh, they've got a firm nylon heel cap inside there that won't collapse as quickly. It comes up to here, in fact, as quickly as the, the specialized ones. And they've got that um, rake back towards the heel ratchet that will hold me right, my hip, which holds my heel right back into that heel cut there, providing upswing on the heel. And also, unlike the um, Shimano's, they uh, fit my forefoot, a very good last shape. I don't know what it is, it's right for me so that there's good forefoot, um, uh, so I can pull a bit with my forefoot as well. And hmm, all around well built. I think they may last longer than Shimano. Um, and very, very cheap, just amazingly cheap. I can't really say that they're meant to be $180 recommended retail price, but I got them for a lot less than that. Very light. And in fact, it's amazing. I prefer them to the, well, they didn't really fit me. The wonderful Shimano uh, 215s, because the wonderful Shimano 215s didn't fit me so well in the forefoot. Whereas these ones do, much more encapsulated feeling, the same feeling of being bound in, and the feeling of um, fit um, one over the, um, the the super, super strong and stiff Shimano um, uh, sole. So I can recommend you show um, these uh, Giro Apex. Uh, and Giro shoes with the carbon sole would be wonderful. Uh, watch out if you've got larger feet. Uh, Shimano shoes are for larger feet. But these do come in a high volume as well. So, um, yes, I can hi highly recommend Giro shoes for just sort of all-round engineering. Uh, offset offset um, Velcro straps. Uh, I don't think you saw that in the... No, can you see that in the, sh in the Specialized there? They're not offset so that uh, the straps sort of pushing the same line there, but I think it's improve, improvement to have, like in the, these ones here, you can see that the line of the um, Velcro straps is offset, and likewise in the Giros, even more so. Uh, great shoes, but then, this is the bomb. This is Italian made um, perfection. In, well, watch out, there are, there are. Uh, okay, so these are called Ergo Carbon One. They're a top grade city shoe. Uh, handmade in Italy, apparently, maybe. And I'm losing focus again, hold on, here we go. And these just happened to be on auction at the same time as the Giros, and they weren't getting a lot of attention. And uh, so I thought I might as well put a bid in, and I got them for something like 50 bucks, and they're a, another close to 400 recommended retail price, or at least 200 and something, even online. 250 about online. And they're just amazing. They're, um, they're like sort of military grade, uh, super light, uh, professional. Well, pro, pros did, did wear them. I mean, there are a few models out of date now. But what is so good about them? Okay, so I got lucky. One of the reasons I got lucky is city shoes, and this is a big problem with city shoes, is that they can be rather thin in the forefoot. So if you're um, uh, overweight or you've got bigger feet, then you should watch out buying some uh, Italian shoes. Uh, personally, I think if you get thin, you should be able to get into them, but um, you never know, maybe Italians do have sort of uh, genetically um, thinner feet. I think they do compared to uh, Japanese shoes. Japanese people are thin too, but um, they um, have a square or broader feet in Japan. Okay, so they are thin in the forefoot, so you want to watch out for that. Uh, maybe that's why they didn't get too much bidding action in Japan. It's because the Japanese were afraid to buy these thin, four-footed shoes. So what's so good about them? Okay, first of all, the sole is made of um, nylon at the toe and carbon reinforced. I think nowadays that they don't have a plate here. It's just one piece of carbon reinforcing it. 
and that provides enough stiffness as far as I'm concerned. They're not as stiff as the super stiff 215s that I just introduced, but they're mm, so stiff I can't tell the difference. I've heard racers say that they could tell the difference, but uh, it's not such that you know, anyone who isn't uh, at a quite a high level would notice. A replaceable heel there. I don't think that's at all. It's very cosmetic, This, the wear at the heel for me anyway. Um, so yeah, really stiff sole. And you, they've got all three types of attachment. Uh, at the toe, where you're not pulling very much, it's got ve Velcro, and so that holds you in well, but it, you know, you don't need to have a real grip there. Now on the forefoot, where you can get a bit of upwards leverage, they've got a boa, um, one of these bits of wire, that like on the lakes. And you can tighten that up just right so that you get grip in the lower forefoot so that you can do a bit of pulling with that area. And then on the, um, on the upper forefoot, uh, combined with a good strong uh, heel cup, they've got this rat right back ratchet, <coughs> oh, sorry, which grips your heel into the, um, into the cup there, providing excellent femur to um, crank uh, uh, stabilization, what is it, fixing, uh, so that you can pull up with that side of the foot, with your heel over your foot. And in the newer Erdi, um, uh, Ergos, they've also got a, um, um, a further piece of support here in the heel that you can, um, with a screwdriver, you can sort of adjust the amount that this arches down into your, uh, into your heel there, which would be even better. So the Ergo 3s now, you'd be able to really grip your heel here. You don't need all that much of a cut arch, but you need it to be firm and you need to ratchet back. Yeah, so that's important to so this ratchet. Why do bicycling shoes have ratchet? It isn't just a marketing gimmick. It is to push your heel into a bit of an arch there. And as long as you've got that bit of an arch there, because heel bones are very, very hard, then you can just sort of link your lower leg into the shoe like it's uh, nailed to the crank, basically, or bolted to the crank. And it doesn't hurt either, because this part of your... This, you can, you know, like the... The tie boxes, they knock people out of their heels because this part of your foot is very, very strong and you don't really feel it. You don't really feel any discomfort by being held in there. So it rakes my heel back into the super strong city heel cup, um, holds my uh, forefoot in perfect um, sort of rock hard, uh, uh, rock hard, mm, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, rock hard something or other, fixation with the carbon reinforced sole and at the front here it's got a nicely adjustable with these um, strange little zigzaggy bits to make sure that it doesn't slip because uh, yeah, velcro does get old but these won't get so old near so quickly because the velcro holds you into these zigzaggy bits and yeah they, yeah i just feel that my foot is in the crank and my times improve as well when i wear these i feel like a pro I mean, I did on with the Shimano's as well, but the Shimano's didn't really fit me. So if you've got a thinner foot and you want to be able to accelerate explosively, then these are the shoes for you. Uh, but I'd recommend these and uh, also the Lakes for someone who likes longer dry rides. And the Juros are an excellent uh, lower lower price point uh, version of the Cities. And uh, yeah, the Shimano's are really good too. But after about five years, I guess. They may come apart for people with bigger feet. And these cheaper ones weren't so bad either, either them, but they are... You, well, I don't know, you don't get what you pay for, because these, 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 uh, these cheap Shimano's, uh, Specialized, sorry, and the, and the cheap Shimano's, they're all right, and I enjoyed them, but the, the Giro's are far better. Wow. Get these instead. Okay? If you can still get Giro Apex, buy them now.